So students, welcome to chapter 6, e-business and e-commerce. It's the 7th of April. We are trying to understand what is this and how it works in organizations. Um, in the 8th edition at this stage and the 7th edition of the Turban book, Information Technology for Management, Transforming Organizations in the Digital Economy. All right. So, the chapter outline here looks like this. We want to understand e-business challenges and strategies. First of all, we need to define e-business as well. What is e-business? Electronic business. And the various, the look of it in in the organization or in industry. If we look at business to consumer e-commerce, business to business e-commerce, what is e-procurement, e-government, and the support services to e-commerce, such as payment and order fulfillment, which is also very important. And then important to you as well is the ethics and legal issues pertaining to e-commerce as, as, as a, a, a division of business. Um, the objectives of this, this course is to describe your strat the e-business e strategies and the, how it operates in business. The, if, the, understand the effective business to consumer e-commerce applications. There's several applications. And we need to understand the logistics, the procurement, the order fulfillment and the payment systems running e-business. Also, what does government, how do they handle e-commerce and e-business and also all the support services. We also need to identify and describe some ethics and legal issues for e-business. Right, so if we look in our book to the chapter here, there is two, there is two scenarios that actually helps us to understand some of the challenges and strategies of e-business. And we can see that it's a mix of online channels and media that gives consumers strong control over where and how they interact with a business. And the book is very Americanized, so we will discuss some American pro um, 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 products such as Amazon.com and ING, uh, online banking, um, a very popular online e-commerce banking um, solution. But we need to look at the strategies and the challenges. So managers need to know how to respond to the changing consumer behavior and the business needs of your customers, as well as what outsourcing development is there and the hosting of e-business software and hardware, um, such as software as a service or cloud computing. Now, this is not in chapter in the seventh edition. It's a it's a newer a newer way of actually um, uh, conducting this type of technology in business, software as a service, SaaS, and cloud computing. But the main question here is: if the business model and strategy are wrong, that you need to understand is then the implementation wouldn't matter in the long run. So it is not about the technology once again. It is about how we implement it in the organization. Right. So, if we look at page, I'm not na 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 managing pages, but what is not in the 8th edition is the definition of e-commerce. Will you make a note of that? I need the definition of electronic commerce. It is in the 7th edition. All right. Electronic commerce describes the process of buying, selling, transferring, serving or exchanging products, services or information via computer networks, including the internet. And we need, we, sometimes we call it commerce as describing only transactions conducted between business partners. But when we use this definition, it is very narrow. So we also want to include our customers as well as our suppliers. All right. So the entire value chain is actually can be run in an e-business environment. All right. So the definition is not, is in chapter in, in the seventh edition. In the eighth edition, we are now looking at what is the dot com era. The dot com era was from 1995 to 2002, all right, and it, it it added the prefix e to business. 
it was usually business management. Now it's electronic business management, electronic records management, electronic customer relationship manage, management, electronic knowledge. You know, everything has an E to it. And it do not limit it, the need to focus on positive earnings and cash flow to, um, to, to, to earn profit. So actually, what was the dot-com bubble in that era? And what lessons were learned from it? That is the question in the 8th edition that is not in the 7th edition. So you need to understand and, and answer me this question. The new economy was the economy of the dot-com era, era or the dot-com bubble. And it extended from this period to 95 to 2000. And it is it actually was limited to companies that was not only a brick and mortar a company, but I also had an internet presence, a very strong internet presence. And they, was un they were unrestrained by mid mo business modules that required making a profit and having huge sum of ma sums of money from venture capitalists. So it, it was an era of internet business. All right. So that is on page I'm going to say 161 to 162 in the 8th edition, that definition of the dot-com bubble, and how did it influence business. Then we also want to look at the types of e-business transactions. And it is the fundamentals of e-business, the fundamentals. What connectivity support or enables the, the business activities? that includes e-business and that is we look at the activities of business processes services collaboration and training and community that brings everything together in e-business and then the types of e-business is your b2b your b2c your c2b your g2c and your mobile commerce and if you look at this slide you can see that it gives a brief description of what the acronym stands for. But in the exam, I need you to explain to me what you understand under business to business. E-commerce. All right. And in the book, it's very clear. It says business to business is where people do transactions, but both the seller and the buyer are business organizations. Business to, co to consumer is where the sellers are the organization and the buyer are the individual. Consumer to business is where the, there's a particular need for a service and then the supplier compete to provide that product or service to the consumer by, for a requested price. All right. And then there's governments to citizens and all the others such as government to government, government to business, provides a service to its citizens via e-commerce technology. Okay. And mobile commerce are conducted via, wire, via wireless networks on your Wi-Fi. All right. So what is the requirements and challenges to do e-business? What do you need to conduct business electronically? You need to be available. Uh, the availability relates to the server side of the e-business. If there's, if there's, there's too much downtime, people will find, don't, not find it useful. You need to have accuracy and quick response. They need to be some security and PCI DSS compliance. We'll look into that definition just now. And we also need to know how to integrate our systems with our enterprise systems. Remember, we have an enterprise information system that actually helps management to make better decisions. And this electronic commerce systems needs to be integrated with it so that they can do, make even better decisions. So, and then your analytics. Learning from the web traffic and log data. If you can't learn from your customer behavior, then you will, you will not find it any use. There will not be such a huge, um, um, uh, positiveness towards this because you want to make money. You want to know how they actually use your product and what they need. So what is PCI compliance? It is a complex process that requires every business that deals with payment card numbers in any way to strictly follow a set of detailed regulations. And they call it the PCI data security standard. All East electronic and brick and mortar merchants must be PCI DSS compliant to accept whole process or exchange credit card holder data of major credit cards. 
and that is on um, in ch chapter it's not in the seventh edition students it's not on the seventh edition um, your PCS PCI stand for payment card industry payment card industry data security standard PCI DSS and you can go and look at the website there PCI security standards.org and see how that can affect our security because it's very important for us to have some security when we do online banking or if we check on our parcels that's in the post or whatever right then there's the e-business model the electronic business model it's people it's on table 6.3 the model actually looks at how we can streamline and automate processes in e-business all right the model is helps us to better understand how e-business works and um, we look at the example of the Dell company now Dell is a computer manufacturer a hardware manufacturer and it provides products and services to customers and it is shown on the right hand side of this thing suppliers distributed partners governments and and uh, all our things that we do and then um, to do so the company must buy inputs such as raw materials and then they must process the inputs and then they must actually market it and then they must actually be able to output it to the sales and the customers so it's a company that actually provides hardware but they go through the whole value chain process so the e-business module is actually based on the following concept Comparison shopping engines, affiliated marketing, electronic marketplaces, memberships, forward auctions, reverse auctions. Now, in the seventh edition, reverse and forward auctions and things is very detailed. It's very described in detail. I want you to rather focus on the questions in the eighth edition. You know, the broad concepts. Okay. So, basically, you need to know that a reverse auction and a forward auction, this is part of the e-business model. Know what it is. Read through it. Okay? And there is a lot of information in this book also about it. But I want you to focus on the model. So, you can name your own price. You can, you can say online auctions, online direct marketing and viral marketing. It's all definitions. I can ask any one of the definitions. It's in the book. But the whole model complies of all these things. That makes it so successful and attractive. That's why people do e-business. Because they can do all these things. Electronically, on the internet, anytime, any place. So, if we go to section 6.2, this is where we look at Amazon and ING Direct. This is two examples of companies that specialized in e-commerce, especially business to consumer e-commerce. All right, so Amazon people, you know that Amazon is a publishing company and they've got their um, slogan that if it's not, um, it's got the biggest, uh, biggest selection of books and if it's in print, it's in stock. So this is a high, high, highly bold statement to make. Because they need to have their processes in order there. Because if it's in print, it needs to be in stock. You can't say it's not in stock. And then ING is the largest online bank with high rates, high volume, low margins and high profits. And the question here, if you look at business to consumer e-commerce, is basically why, how, why do we need e-commerce? And tell me why it's so important. Will it make me a profit? Will it? What's the benefits to the consumer? What's the benefits to the organization? And we can see here competitive edge as one of the benefits. Can you see that? We can see high, low profits, high profits, money making. We can see that um, job openings and the ease of use via online job market. It's easy for people to get out there and get exposure. And also the business to consumer ongoing growth. Um, the challenges there is that it is a take a lot of effort to get something running online. We know we are trying to provide everything to you online via my tutor. It takes a lot more effort than just giving class. All right. So 
E-tiling is electronic retiling. Um, electronic retiling, that is, let me just get myself there. Um, on page 170 in the 8th edition, it is in the 7th edition, e-tiling the definition. But they say despite, despite this growth, there are some issues. And the issues there is regarding res, um, channel conflict between online selling channel and the physical selling channels. Um, resolving conflicts with click and mortar organization, managing order fulfillment, logistics, reverse logistics, definitions that you need to know. You need to know what is logistics and reverse logistics in the business environment. Order fulfillment, you understand that. If you think of Amazon, you place an order. You expect that book to be delivered. All right, there's a process that needs to be followed. And the logistics behind it and the reverse logistics behind it is part of that process. All right, and then we also determine the viability and the risks to the e-tailer. And then we have to identify the appropriate revenue model, the business model. And this is some of the issues that is um, that, that, that they struggle with in e-business. E-commerce and e-procurement. Business to business e-commerce and e-procurement. Now, this is now not to the consumer. It's between organizations, business to business. It comprises about 85% of e-commerce dollar volume. And I can hear that you are trying to... <laughs> to go through your book people but I'm basically on page 201 202 in the book that's where I am in the seventh edition all right we are looking at the business model that table there all right so there's some of the definitions there relax I'm, I'm quickly going through this and this will be available on the system to you and I will make sure that the review questions coincide remember I told you that okay for the 7th and the 8th edition. There will not be any surprises. But by using business to business, organizations can restructure their supply chain and their partner relationship. And this is so important. Remember what is the supply chain? We studied this in an earlier chapter. The supply chain means that it is the, 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 the process that a product takes from the inception to its deliverance, to its actually, the, uh, to the, to the way we actually Live it, deliver it to the customer, all right, or to consume to where the person consumes the product. And we use that um, example of liquid fruit. Remember, where we said, where does liquid fruit start? Where's the con in the conception of liquid fruit? It's on a farm, on a tree, the orange or the peach, and the process it takes until it is in spar in a little box on the shelf. What is that process? And every single process adds value to it. And it's a supply chain and the value chain. There's two chains there. And the e-business helps with those two processes. There's some business models that we need to know in business to business e-commerce. And this is definitions definitely very important in the exam because we need to know the sell side and the buy side um, um, a model for business to business. Um, the sell side is the seller can be either the manufacturer, a distributor, or a retailer. Do you know this company is IBM? IBM also sells computers, right? Do you know Avnet? If you don't and you're unsure, go and Google it. Go to that website. Just see what they're doing. Walmart, you understand, is something like our pick and pay. Oh, hypers. We don't have Walmart in South Africa, but it is a big re um, um, shop. So, the primary methods are forward auctions and online catalogs, which can be customized for each buyer. So, this is sell side. They are, they are giving you the information. Where buy side refers to e-sourcing. It refers to many procurement methods. But the primary one are auctions, requests for quotations, and private exchanges. And this is definitions that can come up in the exam, people. I need to know, you need to know what the RFQ processing definition is and what is a private exchange we will get into those a little bit later e-procurement um, it's also called corporate procurement or corporate purchasing and it, it, um, it, it deals with the buying of products and services by the organization and organizations procure materials to produce finished goods which is referred as direct procurement and products from daily operational needs, which is referred to indirect procurement. 
And e-procurement refers to the re-engineered procurement processing using e-business technology and strategies. All right, so there's some, there's some issues with e-procurement such as control costs and how to simplify the processes to make them more efficient. And that's at the top of page 172. In your seventh edition, e-procurement is an entire section. If you look at your, um, um, you will see it is a little bit more to the end and six, um, unit 6.3, your e-procurement and e-tailing. They are just a bit mixed up. Okay. So it is in the seventh edition, but I'm actually now on page two, uh, um, 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 page two one six in the seventh edition. If we look at private and public exchanges and our sell side and buy side marketplaces. All right. Public and private exchanges. Public and private exchanges. Why do we need to know about this? What is an exchange in e-business? Exchanges are sites where many sellers and many buyers buy and sell. Which one do you know which is very uh, popular in South Africa? It's now advertised a lot. Oh, Alex. Sell it. Don't, what? Sell it. I, that advertise, you know? Yeah. You've heard it. The guy is playing with his golf stocks now and he's it's OLX and eBay. You all heard about eBay. And this is where we look at our exchanges. And we've got some channels for these exchanges. Vertical exchanges for direct materials. Uh, vertical exchanges for indirect materials. Horizontal exchanges for, um, for uh, uh, um, um, uh, office supplies and functional exchanges. Now, this is basically in the e-business section. It's more to business to business side, not to the consumer. Um, but basically, you can look at all these websites if you want to learn a little bit more about the definitions there. Just know the definitions for your vertical exchanges, horizontal as well as um, uh, functional exchanges. Focus a bit on your horizontal exchanges because I need to explain a, a terminology such as maverick buying to you. Maverick buying um, is one of the biggest gains in the elimination or, uh, in, in, in horizontal exchanges because horizontal exchanges deals with MROs. Now an MRO stands for your maintenance, repairs and operation materials. Maintenance, maintenance repairs and operation materials. I'm now at horizontal exchanges. It, be, it means that um, it is products that can be supplied to any business. It is industry-wide. It can go to any, every business needs it. They need material. They need a maintenance um, to um, products. They need operational products. And they are used for maintenance, repair, and operations for the, um, um, for the company. Now, the MRIs... MROs can basically um, um, eliminate maverick buying. Maverick buying, under number three, is done outside the established system. If people buy products outside the established system, so for instance, they, they think they can quickly buy from a, pro, a, a vendor that is maybe cheaper at the time, but they can't buy bulk. In other words, it will work out more expensive at the end of the day. So maverick buying is done outside of the established systems and because sometimes the e-procurement or the, uh, the, the, the e business system is too complicated, and it, but it can prove costly to the company. They can't bargain for um, bulk buying. Okay. And then your functional exchanges where it's a temporary help or extra space for try, uh, where people do something on an ad, ad hoc basis as needed. Right. E-government is an e-commerce model that applies to the government and the public sector. A lot of you are working in the public sector, so this makes sense to you. It is the use of the internet technology to deliver information and public services to citizens, business partners, and suppliers. Now, the benefits there is very, um, very obvious because it improves efficiency and effective, effectiveness increases transparency and citizens can provide feedback. If you even can think of if there's a problem with your, your, your water on your property 
and you can maybe go on the internet and see the progress of your call that you've logged. You understand? Some of that services gives great satisfaction to the customer and also to the people that do business with him, such as the, um, the, 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 you know, the people that actually are called in to help a government to do this work. E-government in the cloud is not in the seventh edition. You need to understand that you need to know the def definition there. Um, budget pressures are leading factors moving governments into the cloud computing solutions and 45 of local governments are using some form of cloud computing for application or services. Now I'd like to actually research this in South Africa but this is definitely in America, <laughs> okay? Right, so they are using um, 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 the cloud uh, as a resource and software as a service in the cloud. Um, if we look at e-government serves, how e, uh, the, the, the e-business can serve government. There's a lot of apps that also helps uh, um, government to, to have certain more, of more control, such as the iPhone apps to curb, curb drunk driving. Um, are you buzzed or buzzed was released with a Colorado dot to exterminate the blood alcohol level. Um, mashup for stum stumble safely gives Washington pedestrians a safe route home after a night at the bar. Things like this. Some of this things that um, e-business can help us, help us a bit in government. Um, E-commerce support services. Now we get to the thing. You won't do something you won't do e-business if you can't make money out of it. I mean, you need to you need to source your money and you need to get make sure that people pay you. So there's a lot of security issues as well as a lot of stumbling blocks to get overcome with the public, even with your suppliers and your consumers if they are not using e-business tools or e-commerce tools. Now, the major support services is your e-infrastructure, your consultants, your processes such as payments, your markets such as marketing and advertising, your communities, your services, customer relationship, partnership relationship management, and your directory services. E-content supplied by content providers. All this needs to go into your e-business plan. And your support services need to be, be very clearly defined in the policy for your e-business plan. Because people need to make sure that they do business correctly. All right. Now, advertising. Um, Advertising strategies, there's definitions that you need to know about advertising. If you just go back once, you see that there is your um, e-markets, marketing and advertising. If we focus on that, there is affiliated marketing and advertising, viral marketing and customizing ads that can make a di difference in your company or in the way that you do business. Um, read through those business or revenue models because marketing can bring in money. All right. Then... There's some e-payment systems that you need to know about. Apart from the fact that they need to comply with the PC, PCI DSS standard, there are certain tools that we use to do e-business. And that is electronic funds transfer, electronic checks, credit cards, e-cards, e-cash, um, pay payments at the ATMs, and micropayments as well as your business-to-business -business special methods. Did you know that NetBank also now brought in a port of point of sale system where people can use their credit cards, uh, they take, they take, it's not a credit card machine. People can with their mobile phone pay immediately as if they don't have to do an e EFT. They can do it on that little system via mobile phones. Impasa, you know Impasa. You can pay people directly from your mobile phone. Um, it's a lot of tools available there that actually needs to help us to make payments electronically. And this is basically the e-credit card processing cycle. It is on page 179 in um, figure 6.10 in the 8th edition. It is also in the 7th edition. Um, that's on page 221. Your e-commerce support services and, the, and how they actually do e-credit card processing. Um, a question that is not, uh, I'm not going to go into e-money as a lifestyle, but it's your IT at work section 6.6. .6. Your mo contactless mobile um, um, phone that actually helps you to make payments for, and there's a lot of things that you can read through there. It's not in the scope of your um, 
it's it's a knowledge this is just for extra knowledge all right um the order fulfillment activities there's a nice figure about that and that's um that's in line with this next question that i want you to focus on students we need to be able to identify the nine steps in the order fulfillment process the order fulfillment and logistic systems run hand in hand and there is nine activities that needs to be addressed okay i want you to just follow me in page 181 um, in the eighth edition and then for me on page um, 229 in the seventh edition all right please just have a look there if you are now a bit lost okay we are needing to do this nine steps in the order fulfillment process. It can be a question in the exam. Remember, you are doing two chapters per exam. And it is between 50 and 60 marks each exam. So you need to be very sure that you understand this work. All right. So let's look at this, um, the, the steps quickly. I'm not going to, I'm reading through them. They need to be assurance. They need to be a stock available. There need to be shipment arrangements in place. There needs to be insurance. Also replenishment, in-house production, contractor use, contacts with customer, as well as what do you do with returns. All these things need to be addressed in your procurement or your order fulfillment policy. All these nine activities. All right. In the seventh edition, they also look at Internet market research, internet advertisements, and online advertisement strategies. It's also in the in the um, in the um, eighth edition. It's also in the eighth edition, but it is more to the beginning of the chapter. If you turn forward, you will see it's at the beginning of the chapter that they explain marketing. Um, they explain marketing in the beginning of the chapter. Let's see where that is. Oh, page 177 in the beginning of the chapter. Um, um, section 6.5. You will see there's marketing advertisements and advertising online is also described there. And I want to now focus a little bit about the ethical and legal issues in, in detail. If we look on page 183 and page 231 in the seventh edition privacy most e-payment systems know who the buyers are but some people have got concerns about that and you need to protect your buyers identities web tracking job loss and disintermediation as well as re-intermediation is terminologies let me just see if it's there no it's not people you need to also add re-intermediation here at the ethical and legal issues. Uh, privacy, you understand. Web tracking is that people don't want cookies and they don't want extra advertisements and spam mail if they do online purchasing. Job loss is mean that, that people are doing everything online themselves now. You are buying the things, so you don't need shop assistance. This intermediation means that such technology eliminates the need for intermediaries such as travel and insurance agents. And re-intermediation, for example, this is a, um, um, where, on the other hand, we provide the second type of service or who manage electronic intermediation are not only surviving, but they may actually prosper. This is where people actually now make money out of this intermediation because of this new branch where we new, use technology for, for um, 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 payment or to get money online and we do minimal effort minimum cost to ourselves all right people that's electronic commerce that's electronic commerce there's a link library that you can welcome to go and look at your link library the review questions differs from the seventh to the eighth edition i'm going to make sure that i answer the i ask questions in this exam that is in both okay but as I said, you need to know the definitions, especially of reverse auctions and forward auctions. It is in the book. Make sure that you actually go and look what all these things mean. Students, you are going to answer the review questions for the 8th edition. 
Why? Because I've got it on the slideshow on eTutalk. And it includes the cloud. And I will also try and see if we can maybe make this, um, because I'm allowed to photocopy these chapters, if we can maybe upload it for you on the system. Okay. I know. I know I might work for you. But thank you for listening to Electronic Commerce and e-business. I hope it makes sense to you. You are going to work in that environment. If you like it or not, you are actually working in it already. <laughs> thank you, students.